inner speech or self-talk is simply your internal dialogue. Science says it's influenced by your subconscious mind, and we all know that it can be negative or positive. Most concerning, many, including I, believe that certain negative or dark energies or beings may influence your thoughts. But regardless what your beliefs are and where they come from, I'm sure we can all agree how poisonous those thoughts can be and how detrimental they are to our lives. Next, I'm gonna show a couple clips from one of Eckhart Tolle's videos. He is a German best-selling author who talks a lot about spirituality and I really like his views on self-talk. I will link both the videos cited here in the description box as well as his website. Negative, every negative thought it gets in your oh. My life is so fucked up, it's so, God, it's so fucking dreadful. Can it, can it get any worse? All the, what these people, they're so, like this dreadful, I just hate these people, God. Why is it always, why is always, this stuff always happens to me, doesn't it? It's just bound to happen to me. Why, why, can, I, I can, why can I never get things right? Why can they never get things right? <laughs> What he did to me, I just can't, can't forget that. I'll just I'll let me tell you about it. <laughs> well, what I did was so horrible, so horrible. I can never. I did. I did that 20 years ago. I did that. I did that. Terrible thing. To, oh God. What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. What's, what, what, what am I going to say if he says that? What am I going to say then? <laughs> what if I lose? If I lose the, that 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 job, these, I think it's. They might. I might get the sack soon. I'm, I have a feeling that, that I'll be out in the street. I can walk back to pay my mortgage. What can I do? That's, what time is it? 3 a.m. <laughs> Oh, and then there's that other thing. God, 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 I don't think I can take any more of this. Okay, uh, on one level, there is an addiction to that. There is something in you that does not want to let go of that type of thinking. So, in order to do anything about it, if I, if I say now, mention what you can do about it, it presupposes a, at least a small degree of awareness while these thoughts happen. There must be a small degree of awareness from which you are able to witness whatever is happening and notice that, that you are engaged in a stream of negative thinking and actually liking it not wanting to get out. You can, especially with anger, which is another form of negative mental emotional state, you can see how people, if you're trying to say to an angry person, would you like me to help you let go of this anger? See what response you get. <laughs> In other words, the person does not want to let go of the anger. It loves that anger while it's while it's on while it, it the person is in its grasp. It it loves. It's the ego. The ego loves that anger because in in an angry state, the ego gets inflated. It usually and and even an insignificant a person in the eyes of the world who has no p power in the world can suddenly start shouting. You fucking bastard! And suddenly the, the ego grows, and, and everybody goes like, "Oh!" And the ego says, "You see, I've, I'm all powerful." Sometimes you see people in the street; they're going around shouting at everybody. That's their ego trip because they have nothing else. But for the ego, even that works. Don't approach that person and say, would, would you be in a, like to be in a peaceful state? I can give you some advice. <laughs> 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 
So if I say that you, what to do about it, it presupposes that you know what's happening to you at that moment, at, during that time. So there needs to be some awareness, and it's likely that it is there. If you ask that question, you, you are here, so that means there is enough awareness in you while it happens to first of all notice that a part of you at least likes it. Not the awareness, but if you're aware, you realize there's something in me that does not want to get out of it. That if it's been going on for years, even your sense of identity or an important part of your sense of identity is in that then you can also be aware that the mind activity that's happening in you is futile and fulfills no useful purpose whatsoever. And then you go, hmm, well these thoughts, isn't that an interesting, what is the purpose of these thoughts? Does it change the world? Do they change the world? Change anything? Or do they just drag me drag me into this hole more deeply And because everybody resonates at a different frequency, we want to be careful and mindful of who we hang around with. If someone's got a pretty low frequency and you're hanging around them quite a bit, it's going to bring your frequency down, which in turn subjects you to picking up and hanging on to some of those negative thoughts. If a friend or a spouse, a coworker, if you recognize that when you're around them, they make you doubt yourself, your self-confidence goes down, your self-worth goes down, those are all signals that you just probably shouldn't hang around that person. What happens is your frequency lowers and that makes you vulnerable to some of those attachments. The more empowerment we have in ourselves, knowing ourselves, trusting ourselves, all those things raise our vibration, which puts up a barrier to those attachments. So different words, the way they make you feel, including your thoughts, all have different frequencies as well. And what happens is our body can't determine the difference between a thought, a negative thought that maybe is on a replay just because, you know, maybe we're in that cycle of self-destruction, self-sabotage, not recognizing those thoughts. Our body can't tell the difference between that and something that you think about that you really want. So whatever our mind is being focused on, it's a natural reaction for our body and mind together to try to manifest that. Therefore, if you're constantly thinking, I'm not worthy, I'm a piece of shit. I mean, I've been there, believe me, I have been there and I was there for a long, long time and it's very hard to get out of it. But if you're constantly thinking that, your body doesn't know the difference and that that is just a thought that shouldn't be there. And that's what it's gonna manifest. And that's what your life is going to be. So that's how important your thoughts are and how important it is for you to stop that train of thought. And what happens is that when, you're, when your vibration is at an all time low like that, that's when those spiritual attachments can come. So the best advice I can give you to distinguish between what is your subconscious and what may be some kind of an attachment is if you've done everything to remove yourself from either that person, that place, those kinds of thinking, if you've recognized it and if you've removed yourself and you still can't get rid of those thoughts, you may have some kind of an attachment. What I need you to do is make a promise to yourself that you love yourself enough to get help. Reach out to someone that you love and just tell them that you need some help. So the next thing I wanna say is nobody 
has the right to take over your mind and place thoughts into it. So what we need to do is reclaim our sovereignty as humans. We are divine. So we need to reclaim our sovereignty and we need to demand that whatever is attached to us, that it leave now because it doesn't have the right to be there. The tool I have found most helpful in cutting any attachment and reclaiming my power has been to recite what's called a revocation. And this revocation, it breaks any ties or vows that you may have made unknowingly. And it says you do not consent and you're taking back your rights. So I have put the full revocation in the description box. Just follow it along. And if you have any questions, just shoot me a comment and I will try to help you out as much as I can. So I truly believe this is a spiritual battle and that we each chose to be here for a specific reason because we're warriors. So if you're here listening to this and if you're part of this, this soul group, um, part of the channel, just know and don't doubt that you are also meant to be here for a very important reason. To sum things up today, I'm going to go back to one of my favorite stories. An old Cherokee told his grandson, My son, there's a battle between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It's anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, inferiority, lies, and ego. The other's good. It's joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, and truth. And the boy thought about it and asked, Grandfather, which wolf wins? The old man quietly replied, The one you feed. Kindly like, share, and subscribe. Every little bit helps. And remember to leave a comment if you had any questions on the content for today. As always, thank you all. I love each and every one of you. And God bless.